Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be testing out some new products. We've got eight reviews in one video, if you like. We're going to be trying out the new Glovel Primer from Dior as well as their reformulated concealer. We've got the Makeup by Mario foundation. I'm going to be putting the Rare Beauty highlighters up against the new Charlotte Tilbury highlighters and seeing which we like best. I'm gonna be sharing a look with the Star Wars Pat McGrath palette. I'm also gonna be trying out one of the new Hourglass lipsticks and sharing all of my thoughts with you on all of these products and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're starting off with the golden one from this Pat McGrath Star Wars collection. By the way, I have to show you, I have to, it would be remiss of me not to show you my completely clean, almost, Sonogy cloth. This is that makeup cleansing cloth. You wipe your brushes on it between uses and things like that. I It shocks me every time I use this that it comes out that clean because you should see the utter state of it when it goes in the washing machine. So I'm gonna start off with this matte brown shade, my Refa 16. I'm just gonna use this really lightly in the crease. So I'm just gonna use this almost like I would a bronzer, just in the crease to give me a bit of a transition between the shimmers that I'm gonna use and my naked eyeball. I think these little five pans from Pat McGrath are so good. I feel like the quality is really nice in them and they're so much more affordable. So if this color story appeals to you and it's you know something that you think you'll use, I feel like they're a great option for like a much smaller price tag, but like Pat McGrath shadows because they're actually like amazing quality. You know, sometimes brands will do a five pan and that just won't be the case. So next I'm gonna use this bronzy shimmer and I'm just gonna use that kind of on the outer third of the lid. Quite lightly, but it's just gonna give me a bit of dimension and a bit of kind of light and shade between that transition and the lid. This one is quite a smoky shimmer. I feel like this little palette for a five pan is such a good sort of go to every day because you can really get like a few looks out of it just using this little five pan, I love it. Okay, so next I'm gonna use this pink shimmer on the end all over the rest of the lid. Hopefully, I've been playing around with my camera settings and I'm hoping that now you're gonna be able to see more of my face in focus. I did not realize being like not a photographer and not anyone who understands anything about technology whatsoever. I didn't realize that one of the settings on my camera was too low. Basically it was, it was causing the camera to like focus very specifically on a very small area, um, which was like the center of my face and then get blurrier and blurrier towards the rest, like of the rest of the frame. I didn't realize I was doing that by choosing a really low aperture. I did not know that. So apparently that is why kind of the perimeter of my face sometimes looked really blurry and then just essentially like my eyes and like this part of my face was what was in really sharp focus because I was focusing on too small an area. So now I've kind of made my aperture or I've made the f-stop a higher number Hopefully more of my face, like my whole face will be more in focus. Cause I think I've had a few, not recently, but I've had a few accusations of people accusing me of using filters on my video. And I think that might have been why, just because like this sort of perimeter of my face looked really like soft focus because the camera was like laser focusing just here and everything else was getting more and more blurry towards like the rest of the frame. So hopefully now you can kind of see like more of me in sharper focus. So hopefully that's happening. I don't know if you're even gonna notice or care. And that's all I'm gonna do to the eyeballs today, really. I don't feel the need to do a lot, but I just wanted to show you kind of a go-to everyday look with this little palette. Didn't even use all of it, used three of the shades. And I feel like this is kind of how I like this palette every day. A very easy going, like soft glam little palette. Very pretty, 
and very easy to work with. I've been putting off opening this box because it's so beautiful and I'll never get the ribbon or the bow back like this. And it's so gorgeous. This is probably like the most beautiful box I think I've ever seen like makeup come in. I'm gonna try and get the ribbon off. Yes, I did it without ruining the bow. Who knows how I'm gonna get it back on, but we're gonna try, I'll tell you that for nothing. Seriously stunning. I don't know what I did to deserve this red box, but I way prefer, is it because it's Lunar New Year? That's just occurred to me. I thought this was like a different festive box because I've already got some that are blue from like holiday. I guess this is the Lunar New Year box. Someone tell me. But it's the most stunning box I've ever had the joy of receiving. But enough about the box, because in here I've got the new Forever Glow Veil Primer and the reformulated Forever Skin Correct Concealer, which guess what, guess what, I'll tell you a secret. I've never tried the original. How dare I? This box is making an annoying noise now. You may be pretty, but you don't get to make a racket. If you can hear a crazy sounding noise, it's my dog, he's still got his cone, he's still wearing his cone while his tail heals, and he's just dragging it around the floor outside, so that's great. Sounds like a serial killer is trying to get in. So as I was saying, I did watch Michelle Wong's review, and she, that was like her holy grail concealer, and from what I can gather, she was like, it's the same. So hopefully, it's, it's good. A lot of people love it, a lot of people's their favourite concealer of all time, but not about the concealer because we're actually putting the primer on right now, hello, <laughs> focus woman. So this is the Glow Veil, I'm excited to try this one because it has the word glow in it, so hello, it's going to be, for me, it smells delightful, delightful, like a lovely expensive skincare scent, beautiful but definitely packed full of fragrance. <laughs> You've been warned. Definitely given my skin a glorious glow. Feels so hydrating. Doesn't hurt that it's literally just got off the van, so it's freezing cold, but that felt very nourishing and hydrating and lovely. Like skincare, literally felt like a moisturizer. So yeah, we will see how we get on with that one. While that's just soaking in, and enjoying itself on my skin. I'm going to try out this mascara from Estee Lauder. This isn't a new out mascara, I don't believe, but it's new to me. I received this in PR and I thought I'm gonna try it. I've never even heard of it, not familiar with it. Wow, that was intense mascara smell. I don't know why I always have to sniff everything. Sometimes it doesn't pay off, I'll tell you. I didn't really have high expectations, or I don't really have high expectations of this mascara because I just don't really associate Estee Lauder with a banging mascara. Correct me if I'm wrong, tell me if there's a mascara from Estee Lauder that you love. I'm just thinking and expecting it to just not be luscious enough for me. Not lashy enough, you know, it's not gonna give me the lashes of dreams, that's my expectation. The brush is a bristly one, fairly large. Nothing about it is telling me, yes, this is gonna be for me. I mean, the initial coat is just okay. Nothing horrendous, but it's also not wowing me. But for me, I mean, the proof is always in that second coat, isn't it? That's where things hopefully should start to get quite dramatic. This is giving me, it's giving me length for sure. It's not giving me that much volume, which is strange because it literally says sumptuous extreme, which in my mind conjures up big fat lashes. Extreme, fat, that's what it says to me. I don't know about you, but it does say lash multiplying mascara. I don't notice the multiplying, I'll say that. There is utter chaos going on out there. I don't know what that dog is doing, but it's really making a racket. I'm not noticing any extra lashes that weren't there when we started, but it's definitely not clumping together. So I guess it's doing what it said on the tin. Okay, so I mean, the primer has been on for like a few minutes now and it's still looking super glowy. I'm loving it. I don't feel like it's like enhancing texture, very white to begin with and very thin, which I like. I don't really like a thick, primer. I think I thought this was going to be like shimmery just from looking into the bottle, but it's not. It's just really luminous and beautiful. I'm really liking it. 
feels lovely as well. It's still feeling hydrating now, still looking very glowy, but in a luminous way, not a sort of like I've put highlighter on my face kind of way. As you can probably tell, my skin is a bit angry. It does not like central heating my skin it hates it my rosacea loves it though thriving so now we're moving on to the makeup by mario foundation now i purchased two shades i thought i was purchasing my winter shade 8n and what i thought would be my summer shade 12o i bought two shades because the shipping is crazy expensive from his website to the uk and so I wanted to make the most of it, you know? I don't want to pay it twice, you know what I'm saying? But actually, when it arrived, I quickly realized that 8N was just too light for me and actually very stark on my skin tone. It being an, a neutral shade, and I would say this is quite a sort of classic neutral shade, really quite neutral, doesn't sort of really lean one way or the other, maybe slightly warm maybe slightly warm, but it was just too stark and too neutral for my skin tone and too light. So then I tried the 12O and actually this is a really good winter shade for me. So if you are a winter shade twin, then 12O is a really, really nice shade for now. So who knows what my actual summer shade will be. Now, like lots of people, it did quite alarm me as to how sparkly and glittery the product looks in the bottle. I've never seen anything like it before. I'm not 100% sure how clearly you'll be able to see it on camera, but it literally looks like packed with glitter. But apparently that is actually mica, so yeah. That's just something that I think most people will notice when you get the bottle. It's very pretty and glittery. So I have definitely had like some mixed experiences with this foundation. And something I thought that was very interesting watching Scott Cortez's review on TikTok, he's a makeup artist, and he tried several different shades of this and he found that he got completely like different experiences with the foundation from different shades. So he kind of believes that the formula is inconsistent across shades and that's really interesting because the first time I used this foundation, I used the shade 8N. And then since then I've been using 12O and while I do definitely like the 12O more and have better experiences with it, I'm not sure if that's just because the shade works better for my skin tone. You can see it's a little darker than my neck perfect to my body but a really good undertone so it's a decent a decent shade for most brands of foundation this is about as good as like a match gets for me it's always a little off just because most brands don't do many olive shades to choose from but this is a really good tone and once concealer and everything is on it looks great like most foundations I kind of have to pick the nearest shade rather than it being like a perfect match and it's definitely more important to me to like get a good undertone than it is like the right level of depth if you see what I mean because the wrong undertone looks bonkers whereas you know this being like maybe half a shade too dark is easily dealt with. So what I've noticed about this foundation is it gives me, kind of starts off as like a light coverage and goes to like a medium. I wouldn't suggest building it or trying to wear it full coverage because I have found it kind of can look quite heavy quite quickly. So I would say this kind of just neutralizing my redness and kind of getting a nice even amount of coverage. This is about where I want to stop building it. And it does take a little more work, I found, um, to like get rid of brush strokes in the foundation and on the skin um, than some foundations. Some foundations, you know, they just sort of really work easily into the skin. This one, I feel like it just needs a little bit of help to perfect it, but not a big deal. It's definitely looking glowier for having that primer underneath it than it typically has. I find it wears really nicely but it gets quite shiny around my nose. I don't find it super glowy. I find it sort of natural satin-ish finish wise and a kind of medium amount of coverage. It looks quite makeup-y would be my one negative. I think it doesn't look like you're not wearing makeup. It doesn't look like you're not wearing foundation. It looks like you're wearing a solid 
foundation. So that's like the finish. I wish the finish was a bit more skin-like. That's kind of the negative, but I've worn this a few days, six to eight hours. I'd say at the six hour mark, I get some shininess around my nose. That's about it. And it doesn't really fade and cause any issues other than that. It's really nice on like the body of my face. I think over time, with the 8N, I noticed like this area looking heavy and a bit cakey and just starting to look dry, like towards the end of the wear, like seven or eight hours. Whereas the 12 shade, like I haven't had that problem. So again, I feel like I've had a much better experience with this shade than I did with the other shade, which is strange. So onto concealer, I couldn't get the shade I wanted. I wanted to order 2N which was out of stock on Dior's website. And I was too scared to go to two and a half N because in case it was just too dark. So I got the shade 2WO, which is pretty perfect, I would say, actually. I prefer a neutral undertone concealer, but it wasn't an option. And I didn't want to go too warm. I did definitely didn't want to go pink at all. So what I thought I'd do today, this is my absolute first impressions with this concealer because it's literally only just arrived. I thought what I'd do is use this concealer on this eye and I'll use my typical Huda concealer on this side so I can compare the two. Feels very thin and hydrating, I will say that. Yeah, so this is 24 hour wear and hydration, creamy concealer, full coverage, so ticking a lot of my boxes and it certainly feels hydrating. I definitely think this shade is a little dark, but I think the 2N would have been my perfect ideal shade, but this one will be fine just for review purposes. And then if I like it, I can wait for 2N to come back in stock. But if you're a shade twin, 2N would be the shade that I would suggest. So on this side, I'm gonna use my Huda, which is the shade 2.7. Just see that's a bit more brightening, but we'll bear that in mind when we compare them. All I want to see really is how the creasing looks in my lines, how it wears and how it covers. I'd say that actually has given me more coverage despite it being a darker shade because the lighter shade helps with coverage because it, br it just brightens the area. That is that sort of darker area. But I think this is actually covered better than the Huda, even using just that tiny amount. So that's interesting. So I'm gonna use my usual Pat McGrath powder to set both sides. So it's a fair test. I feel like I used a really small amount of that Dior, really little ditty bit, really thin layer, and it's covered really nicely, and it does have a really thin consistency. I've just realized it probably would have been really helpful to swatch the two Mario shades next to each other, so I already swatched 8N, let's swatch 12O next door. So we have 8N, 12 Olive, so you can see that olive undertone there, you can see it's a little darker, and then Pretty classic neutral shade. I think the eight shade looks better on my hand. On my face, it really washed me out. Like for me personally, to get like a perfect match, I'd probably mix a little bit of eight in with 12, but obviously that's not very helpful if you're trying to match me. So I thought I would just use 12 on its own today. But you can see once we've got concealer and bronzer on, it's gonna look really good. And if I didn't have such a high neck, you would see that everything matches nicely. Let's try a second coat of this mascara. So I'm definitely seeing the positive about this mascara because if you want something a bit more natural and fluttery, this is definitely giving me a nice fluttery lash without really much volume, which I think some people will really like if that's your style of mascara. It's not really mine. I, I need the volume. I need the drama. But it is a pretty more natural mascara. It's keeping everything nice and separated and it's giving me plenty of length. So I think this is going to be one that's either for you or it's not. But it's actually 
doing what it said on the tin quite nicely. Okay, so I'm just going back quickly to my little palette and I'm gonna use that same brown matte and run it a little under the eyes. Under my lower lash line, very lightly, keeping it no time. Let's do a little close up of these concealer under eyes. So far, they're both looking very smooth. I definitely think, given that the Dior was a darker shade that doesn't really help brighten, that the coverage was great for such a small amount. It's looking very smooth. And I think to my eye, I think the like lines just here look smooth, more smooth than they do on this side. Oh my dings, are we gonna have a new holy grail today? <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to be ordering that right shade, so watch this space. The next item I'm going to be using is a bronzer and I cannot show you it and I cannot tell you which bronzer this is. This is gonna be a fun little game we're going to play. Now, I like to live on the edge, okay, but not so close to the edge that I fall off. I don't want my channel to get taken down. I don't wanna get a copyright strike. This bronzer has not been released yet, okay? It hasn't even been like sneak peeked. It hasn't even been like coming soon by the brand. So I'm too scared. I am a wimp, okay? I'll hold my hands up. I'm too scared to show you it and tell you what it is just because I don't want my channel to get taken away and deleted. It's not worth it. But what I will say is I've had this bronzer for a couple of months now and I've been using it almost every time I do my makeup for the last couple of months. I was able to get my hands on it due to one of my amazing little makeup fairies and she knows who she is and she's my little makeup fairy who sometimes is able to get me some things that haven't officially released here yet and I got this bronzer I thought I will play around with it so that when it's released, I can actually tell you all about it. Now, I have been using it a lot. I have even been posting it in my Instagram photos, right? And you know, when I do a flat lay and this is my makeup of the day, I've been putting it in those photos, but just kind of like burying it a little bit and not one of you has noticed. So that is sneaky, I will say that. If you really wanna know and work out who and what this bronzer is and where it comes from and which brand it is. If you watched my makeup predictions video, makeup that I believe we're gonna see in 2023, makeup that I think we're going to get in 2023, this bronzer was one of my guesses. And that's all I'm gonna say. What I will also tell you is this is shade two. I don't know how many shades there are, but it must, there must be a one, okay? If there's a two, there's gotta be a one. That's just the way of the world. When I saw it, I thought it's gonna be much too light for me. It looks too light in the pan and with the swatches, but as you can see, it's not. It's just perfect. The perfect amount of like natural bronze, subtle, beautiful. I love this bronzer. It's so smooth. I love the finish. It's very, very natural. I hope that this is not the darkest shade. That's my only concern. If two is like, it's, you know, there's two shades, this is not going to bronze like anyone deeper than me. Even, I couldn't even use this, I don't think, in summer to bronze me. So I'm, I really hope that there are at least three, if not four shades. And I think probably I would pick up another shade when it releases. Uh, maybe the third shade would be even better than this one, but I love it. I also thought looking at it and swatching it would be too warm for me, but I'm living for it. I love this bronzer. I've been barely using another bronzer since I got it. So yeah, coming soon. As soon as I'm allowed to safely talk about it, you'll be the first to know. So next up, I spoke about the Rare Beauty highlighters in my monthly roundup and how I don't really love it. This is the shade Flaunt. It was the only shade I could get. It keeps selling out. So it was the only shade I would have, I could get my hands on. I probably would have gone a shade lighter if I could, but as you can see, it's usable on me. It's not like so dark, I can't use it as a highlighter, but I, I think it, I could have benefited from going a shade lighter, but <laughs> I couldn't get that one. So I have told you my thoughts on this, but I haven't shown you it on me. So we're gonna do that today. This is just, it's too highlighty for me, it's too much. It's 
too metallic and it's too texture enhancing. I'm gonna show you the application of this and what it does to my skin close up. So Sonogy Fan Pro, I'm gonna use it gently and tap off because I wanna give it a chance, you know, maybe I'll change my mind today. Watch what happens to my skin when I apply this. Hopefully you can see. Did you see the texture just like jump off my skin? Did you see it just suddenly appearing before your eyes as if by magic? It just adds so much texture to my skin. I can't forgive it, it's unforgivable. And I'm sad because I really wanted to love it and I feel like everybody else absolutely loves it and I just can't. Now you can see as I'm facing forward, because it's too dark, you can like see the color as I face forward, it's creating a cast. So yeah, I would definitely go a lighter shade and that would help with that. But I don't really plan to buy another shade because this is just, it just adds so much, so much texture. It's just not my type of highlighter. So yeah, that's my thoughts. I thought on this side, we would use the Charlotte Tilbury in Pillow Talk because this was the shade that I didn't use in my video. And this is actually one of my favorites. So let me show you the difference. Do you just see how much smoother and subtle and melted into the skin this side looks? This is a really good shade for me. I do prefer the, I do prefer the Gilded Glow. That's even better for my skin tone. Like that one literally is like the color of my skin tone. And so it's very, very subtle. This one is a little more bright, but better for me than the Champagne Glow, which is like uh, getting too light, too light for me. And starting to leave a cast, but from, you know, the other end of the scale. So as you can see, this one is really standing out on my cheek versus this much smoother, much more subtle and melted in. Much more texture, much more metallic. So, I mean, it's horses for courses. The Charlotte Tilbury for sure is my preference but for lots of people, it will be the other way around. Now I will say there's a, quite a big price difference between these two, which I think lots of people have spoken about, but there is also a massive like amount difference. The Rare Beauty highlighter only has 2.8 grams, 2.8. That is a really stingy amount for a highlighter. The Charlotte Tilbury has seven grams and that's like an average amount. That's not even like a really generous. I've got highlighters that have 10 grams of product. This is 2.8. So the Rare Beauty is really not as good value, although it is a lower price point and you have to think, will I like use a highlighter? Is that actually gonna be a problem? that there's so little in there. But just so you know, it's actually more expensive per gram of product than like most of my other highlighters in my collection. So just something I noticed. So while we're here, although this is not a new product out, I thought I would share, share, Sherwood Forest. I thought I would share with you how I like to apply my Westman Atelier blush stick. As someone who like hates creams, I thought this would be an interesting experiment to just share how I apply this cream given that I'm a cream hater, a cream amateur. I'm just an amateur in general, let's be honest. So BK Beauty 111, and I just give it one of these, a little stroke, a little tap -a on the end there until you've got a small amount of product, let's say, and I almost push, push, I press. I'm not really buffing, I'm just kind of pushing it into the skin, and it's so, pretty and natural and you really can build this as much or as little as you like. You can have it as soft and gentle or it can really build and be a beautiful, vibrant, but I mean it's not really going to be vibrant I'll say that because the shade I have is Mimi and it's a very natural shade. So it's not like gonna give you, you know, a punchy cheek, but it's just gorgeous and delightful. And you can see nothing has moved. Nothing has disappeared off my face. Nothing has caked up. <laughs> well done, well done, Gucci, well done. Okay, I almost forgot that I actually have another product to share with you. Just gonna give this a little bufferoo. 
around the edges, particularly on this side, as we've got havoc breaking out over there with that highlighter. I mean, even on my forehead, where I've placed that highlighter, it's suddenly like added 20 years of crinkles and texture, which I don't appreciate. Thank you very much. Okay, so for the lips, I have one of the nude lipsticks from Hourglass. This is the shade Dove. I, so for lips today, I have one of the new shades of Hourglass lipstick. I'm loving this packaging. It's glorious. I love just the plain, gold funky little shape i was really hoping that this is going to be like a push out situation but it is just a pull so that was slightly sad but i will take it i i'm fine with it so this is the shade dove and i was quite surprised because i feel like this looks nothing like the swatches on their website and was much darker than i was expecting but she's beautiful So I was quite surprised when I first received my order because I just thought, wait, I thought Dove online, it very much looks like a sort of peachy nude. There's nothing, there's no nude to see or to be seen here. This is just a straight up peachy, quite sort of rich peach lipstick actually. So yet again, a brand who makes their swatches really confusing and annoying and like nothing like the actual color of the lipstick, which we don't love that, but it's a happy accident because I actually love this color. I think it's gorgeous. It's definitely for me more like spring summer than it is a winter color that I would wear very often, uh, but I think it's beautiful. And the feel is very nice and light and smooth very comfortable and hydrating. And although it's not a super long wearing like bulletproof lipstick, it is a satin, so it is gonna transfer and it is gonna wear off. It wears off nicely and it's decently wearing for a satin lipstick. So I'm really liking this formula. It's not quite shiny enough for what I love with these types of lipsticks. I either want like a matte lipstick or I want like almost a gloss in a lipstick. So this is kind of in between those two. I wish it was a bit shinier but it's a very pretty lipstick. So let's do a little close up on everything, on the under eyes, on everything, the foundation, and see if anything has happened. I've just had a little close up in my mirror, and I feel like now my under eyes, as far as the lines, basically look identical. So remember, this is the Dior side, this is the Huda side. I definitely think the Dior has more coverage, and probably in a smaller amount, even despite the shade being a bit too dark. So I think if I used 2N and we had more of a brightening effect there, then we'd see even more coverage. So I think that's great. I think as far as like lines, texture, etc., they look very, very similar. I think you can also see on this side that Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, much, much smoother. But looking pretty good around here, that problem area for that foundation, Foreheads looking pretty good as well. And what do you think of the mascara close up? Is it for you or do you need more like me? More is more, that's what I said. Okay, so let's start off my very initial first impressions of the Forever Glow Veil because this is the first time I'm using this today. I really like it. I really like this primer. It's not quite as smoothing as the Tom Ford Soft Matte, for example. That is obviously a completely different primer. This is probably easier to compare, compare to like the Tatcha Silk Canvas or the Liquid Silk Canvas because it's a more hydrating and glowy primer, whereas the Tom Ford Soft Matte is a very refining, smoothing, mattifying primer. So they are completely different and offer something completely different, probably for different skin tones as well. The Tom Ford gives me a very smooth, refined, mattified base for makeup. This one is just super glowy and hydrating and it's definitely given me a gorgeous glow to my skin, even through 
the foundation, which is at a pretty solid medium coverage now. I'm liking the Makeup by Mario foundation way better today because it's got that extra glow coming from this primer. It feels very nice to apply. I love the scent. I didn't need very much. I think it's gorgeous. I'm definitely going to use this more with some of my other foundations and see how I like it, see how it affects the wear. And I'm also interested to see in comparison to the Tom Ford Soft Matte, whether there are foundations that are less flattering with this one instead of the Tom Ford because it's not as smoothing. However, for a really glowy, luminous primer, I expected this to enhance texture. I thought it would, you know, definitely kind of show lines, pores, texture more than like with no primer or with the Tom Ford. And I didn't find that at all. I actually felt like it really was quite smoothing and fresh and healthy and luminous, but really not textured at all. I think I thought this was going to be like sparkly and shimmery and it's not. It's like a really fresh glowy luminosity so really pleasantly surprised by that one i thought i would like the glow but i thought it was going to be you know at the cost of extra texture and it's really not so this is definitely one for me to keep trying and i'll give you my more in-depth thoughts in my january roundup had to really think about what month it was going to be then so next up let's talk about this makeup by mario foundation i've been using this for about a week now and i like it i don't yet know that i love it i think it's a nice foundation it has decent coverage and it wears okay but there's just something, like I said, about the finish that looks a bit makeup-y for me. It looks a little heavy. I have foundations that are like full coverage, don't get me wrong. I don't shy away from coverage. I like a good medium, a solid medium. That's where the sweet spot is for me. I also don't mind a lighter coverage. But even the like higher coverage foundations that I love, they still have like a skin-like finish. Like they don't look heavy and very makeup-y and although they have given me a lot of coverage they still look skin-like and have a natural quality to the finish this one I feel like I'm lacking that I feel like it looks very makeup-y and not in a cakey way but it just the finish is not as natural and skin-like as what I look for and love and prefer but I am going to keep playing with it because I also don't dislike it it doesn't really enhance texture I definitely got along better with the 12 shade and I did the 8 shade. I think this one just suited my skin tone, my undertone more, and I think it also seemed to perform better. As some other people have noticed, there may be some discrepancy and some inconsistencies depending on which shade you have, which is strange, but definitely something that I've, I've seen a few people pick up on. It does wear nicely with, like I said, a slight bit of shine coming around the nose at about the six or seven hour mark, but it doesn't fade, disappear. I don't notice this transferring everywhere. And yeah, I get along fine with it. No, you know, overpowering scent, nothing like that. The only thing is I do find the application process just takes a bit more work. It seems to want working into the skin and it can be tricky to get rid of brush strokes and things like that and to build it. So yeah, I think it's like slightly problematic, slightly tricky to work with. And the end result is just not quite what I prefer and I'm looking for. So it's a like, but at the moment it's not a love, but I am gonna keep playing with it. The bronzer that I cannot reveal to you, I love. It may be my favorite bronzer of all time. I think what could tip that over into guaranteed this is my holy grail bronzer would be more shades that might work better for me so we'll have to wait and see on that one as soon as i can confirm which bronzer this is the name of the bronzer i will of course do that but for now this is between me and you the star wars palette i just love it i think it's very easy to work with i think it's really beautiful the formulas in here are lovely and it's quite versatile for a five pan and the kind of eyeshadow that i like to do for every day it works beautifully I love it. The Dior concealer, I'm really, really impressed with. I really like the packaging, the bottle, the doe foot, the amount of product that gave me a really full coverage, I'm really impressed with. No creasing whatsoever so far. I'm gonna obviously wear this for the rest of the day. I'll let you know in a pinned comment how this wore, because again, this is my very first impressions with this concealer. I haven't used it before. So I'm gonna keep you posted as to whether there's any creasing movement or fading throughout the day. But so far, this is definitely going to be one that I'm gonna keep using. I think it's lovely. It feels very light and hydrating, but gives me a really good full coverage without creasing or settling. So far, so very good. I definitely want to get a different shade. This is 
is just a little dark for me right now. This will be perfect in summer, so I'll keep hold of this one, but I think 2N will be better for me right now, give me a bit more brightness and therefore kind of cope with darkness under my eyes better, I think. The mascara is a like it, it's fine. I can understand why some people would appreciate it, but it's not what I really look for in a mascara, so yeah. That's all she wrote on that one. You know how I feel about the Charlotte Tilbury highlighters. If you did not watch my review, I love them. I think they're beautiful, gorgeous highlighters. Do you need another highlighter? Only you can answer that. And yeah, if you are around my shade, I would recommend the Gilded Glow. I think that's the best shade out of those that I have tried for my skin tone. And it's one that you could probably use winter and summer too. Just the most soft, smooth, beautiful luminosity which I really love. The Rare Beauty is just not for me, it's too metallic, it's too much. I have to use it very carefully, a very small amount and even then, although I can get it to be slightly less like metallic and obvious highlighty, I can't get it to stop enhancing my texture as much as it does and I don't love that. So yeah, I'm, I'm sad because I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't love it. Maybe I need to try another shade. I don't know, what do you guys think? And lastly, for the new products today, the Unlocked Lipsticks. These are very comfortable, very nice and hydrating on the lips. I think they have a really nice amount of pigment and I really like the shade that I got, but I will say I wish Hourglass would sort out their online swatches because I feel like they're completely inaccurate. And I would like to buy more shades of this, but I also would like to know what the shades look like in reality because I feel like the ones online are just not accurate. And that is such a big problem with so many brands. But the lipstick itself, I really like it. This is definitely a shade that I will be wearing spring and summer try and stop me. So there you have it. That is all of my thoughts on all of these products today. If you have tried any of the products from today's video, please let us know your experience and your thoughts in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.